Hello everyone, Ohm here, back with another video. This time I'm going to be discussing ways to put blocks between you and the enemy to keep yourself alive effectively. That's right, armor is the topic of this video. Now, as usual, you can find timestamps to help yourself navigate the video. And down in the description, you can also find a link to my Discord server where you can come and ask questions, theory craft, showcase your work, uh, have some real talk or just share memes, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, come have some fun. And let's get started about armor. So armor, one of the first things I have to say about armor is I think some people have an unhealthy relationship with armor. And what I mean by that is simply that it probably shouldn't be your only line of defense. And if it is your only line of defense, your goal with armor shouldn't be to just tank all of the damage for the whole fight, but rather to survive long enough to swing the fight in your favor. You're not, you're just not going to be able to survive everything using armor unless you have an absolutely massive material advantage. So whenever you're going into a build, consider that first. Now, there's four levels of armor that I consider in general. And the first level is basically the I don't care level. And what I mean by that is you'll have exposed bits and maybe a few blocks of armor uh, where you might be hit, or at least where you think you might be hit, and just enough to survive, let's say, a stray fragment or a very small explosion, or, I don't know, a secondary weapon, maybe, not a main weapon. It's just there, you know, if you have any armor there, it's just there to take a random stray hit, and if it's not enough, it's not enough, oh well, just too bad. Um, planes are going to be a really good example of where you will use this level of armor. You really don't want much armor because your main defense is going to be speed. You don't want to be hit in the first place. And any armor you have there is just enough to survive a glancing hit, basically, and that should be your aim. The next level of armor is what I call minimal armor. There's not really a good name for it. Uh, this is more for medium-sized vehicles or larger. For places where you don't think you'll be hit very much, uh, you'd rather not lose what's there, but you can't afford to lose it, right? So the sides and the back on the front side are, is a good example of this. Uh, the bottom of my hover tanks is a great example of this. There's not going to be a lot of incoming fire there. And even if there is, typically the angle is so bad that a very small amount of armor is enough to keep the vehicle alive. So single layer of metal, you just cover everything, you know, prevent a small explosion from sneaking in there, fragments, things like that. But you're you're covering pretty much the whole thing with that. Uh, covering your whole vehicle, your whole vehicle should at least have minimal armor if it's uh, expensive enough and it's not uh, dodgy enough. You should have some armor to at least take a hit or two from a secondary weapon. And that would be uh, minimal armor, the second tier of armor. Now, the, what I would call the standard tier of armor, what you should really be going for with a vehicle, a frontline vehicle, for example, um, is going to be just enough to take a hit from a main weapon or to survive uh, for a certain amount of time to high rate of fire weapons. Let's say 20 to 30 seconds of sustained fire in that particular location and the armor is still unbreached. Everything functional is still functional. That would be the next tier of armor. That's what I usually try to achieve, let's say, on the sides of my hover tanks because they are broadsiders. Um, let's say the belt armor on a ship, that would be what you'd be trying for. And then we have the next level of armor, which would be just more than that. And that would be, say, the front of a front sider, uh, the turret caps on my hover tanks, because they usually have only one turret. And most of their firepower is on there, so I really want to keep it alive. So I go an extra mile and put on even more armor than is enough to survive a, a hit from a main weapon. Uh, at least, now you've got to put that into context. Uh, when I say a main weapon, it should be the main weapon of something in the cost bracket of what you're building. So in a tournament, you're looking for a something realistic that would be uh, the main weapon within uh, that maximum amount of materials, for example. Or if you're planning for the campaign, you know, the type of vehicles you want to fight. That'd be the four main types of armor. So think about that before um, 
used to get started on Vico because sometimes people, they either go really bad, it's just kind of haphazard, or they go really balls to the walls, crazy with armor, and it's just, uh, it turns into a, this vicious feedback loop where you have so much armor that you actually need more thrust and you're, you're just making yourself a bigger target. So then you need more, well, more jets, for example, and then you need more engines to protect that, but then the vehicle gets bigger, so you need even more armor, and it just keeps going, and it's just terrible. So, you know, try to have a good approach and a healthy perspective on armor. Moving on. All right, let's talk about something a little bit more concrete, and that is your choice of material for your armor composition. Now, here are the base materials here on this handy lindy little chart, which you can make yourself, it's pretty simple. But anyway, and the first column is HP, pretty standard, and you could treat this also as a kind of a density chart, whereas wood and applique would be pretty much at the bottom of the density list, meaning you have very little health per block or per meter of armor, and where heavy armor and metal are at the top. So that's not necessarily cost effectiveness, this is space effectiveness. Armor is going to be relevant against most types of damage, except maybe sabots and things like piercing particle accelerator cannons or packs. Weight is pretty self-explanatory. Heavier vehicles tend to drift more. They tend to be harder to float as well, with heavy armor having a special mention here for being super dense and being therefore super hard to float. Everything else um, basically, stone, metal, and applique are close to neutral buoyancy, and wood and alloy are very floaty. So if you're trying to float heavy armor, you need a lot of alloy or wood. And then we have the cost, pretty self-explanatory. And we have the derived stats, which is EHP, effective health. This is HP times armor. Again, this is going to be the most relevant stat against everything other than sabots and piercing packs. And as you can see, heavy armor is really far up there. It is very good at what it does. Metal, also quite good, significantly better than alloy. Even though it looks similar, it's actually kind of different. However, that's not the whole story, right? Because those piercing packs and sabots, they don't really care that much about armor. So how much health are you getting per material? Well, you're getting the most out of wood and stone. Now, that is per material, so you know if you want to pack up a lot of health, you're going to need a really thick slab of armor. Then we have the effective health per material, and you'll see once again, heavy armor and applique are right up there. Now, heavy armor looks weaker than applique, but Heavy armor can benefit from stacking, and the difference is so small that stacking more than makes up for it. For So this is a bit deceptive. Heavy armor is technically more um, effective per material than applique against everything uh, that is like fragments, explosives, etc., and so on. Then we have mass. Uh, again, wood is going to be really good, but then alloy is even better. So if you're trying to keep something light, no surprise, lightweight alloy is the way to go. And this is even more true when it comes to uh, effective health per mass. So bear these in mind when you're coming up with your armor layouts. All right, a lot of me talking and not a lot of movement, but here we are finally with concrete examples of how you can lay out your armor. And this here is basically, I'd say my standard basic amount of armor. And the red block on the right is basically here to showcase where the incoming fire would come from and in what direction. So like this, basically. And why would you lay out your armor like this? Well, to put it simply, you have two layers of metal here, which gets a stacking bonus. And then you have these angled, uh, normally you'd use beam slopes, but for the showcase, I'm using a single slope to create an air gap and then a backing material, again, to increase the armor of these blocks. Now, why would you put the slopes in this position and in, well, upside down, basically? And that is because if fire is coming in from either flat or slightly above, fragments and kinetic shells 
deal reduced damage to angled armor. And if you're coming in from, say, above like this, and you're following this curve, this is a pretty shallow angle. Uh, this is even shallower if you hit the flat surface here. So you do this for something that is like, say, a low-flying hover tank against a ship. But if you're flying above your target, you might want to put the slopes in the opposite direction because then the fire is going to be coming from below and then it would be potentially completely flat with the slope, which would be terrible. Uh, now, this has a slight weakness, even though technically there are air gaps here that can catch fragments from Hesh and Heat shells, and that is because Hesh and Heat can actually travel the very thin line where this block touches this other block. So the slope here just barely touches the surface of this metal, so it is possible for a heat or hash shell to thread this needle and spawn fragments on the other side. So what would you do? Well, just have a full-on gap. If you do this, you could also have full blocks here. That would be obviously more expensive, but also more health in the same space. Um, but it would work. And it would be better, actually, if you did that against things like explosives or wide cone fragments like hash, uh, something like that, wide angle, uh, frag shells, something like that. This would be better. Um, then moving on, some people would sometimes do something like this. And I don't recommend it. And you'll see why in a moment. Now you might think, well, this is similar to this. It's just more armor and you've got more gaps, so less chance of heat and hash going through, right? Well, yes, but also no. Even if you added space in between those, uh, there's a bit of an issue here, and that is because, well, you waste stacking in two places instead of one. By having two gaps, even though this block only affects this block, this block here still affects this one. So here you could have another backing material to provide a bonus to this layer, but now you don't because you've got an extra air gap. You only need one air gap to trigger heat and hash. So something like this is exactly the same amount of material, the exact same weight, but it has a bit more health. And this is all compounded, right? If you make it even thicker or out of heavy armor, um, it's a small difference, but it becomes a big numerical value when you increase the thickness and the sheer amount of HP per block. So it can become significant and it can make the difference between, uh, well, something going through and something not going through. The other thing to remember is that Hesh does not, you know, go through armor for free. The thicker the armor, the more damage it loses, right? So the thicker the slab, if this was even thicker, it would lose even more damage before reaching the air gap. So it's still an effective uh, defense. Now, heat is a bit different. Heat, you pay the price for uh, going through thicker armor up front. You just set the heat to have a higher penetration metric and will go through more armor. But still, that means it's weaker. And if you put all of these together, you know, the person risks either not going through your armor at all or it goes through but you know you still have more stacked armor there than you do here right you've got three solid layers of metal here whereas here you've got the uh alloy which is an half a half block and then two meters of metal so if you magnify this further with thicker armor schemes you should be fine with a single air gap so Please, please avoid doing this. You're just throwing away health. And why armor composition matters, here we have very similar stats. It's about 7% more expensive, but it is about 8% more health. But the thing that's noticeable here, and it might not be at a glance, is that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 blocks wide. And this is 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks wide. So this is essentially thinner, but more resistant 
and for a slightly increased cost, but a proportional increase in cost, pretty much. So do pay attention to which materials you use. Another further example, here we have a layer of wood. Why? Because Hesh, uh, when it fragments, its uh, armor piercing value is influenced a lot more by the last layer than by any other layer it has to go through. So by putting wood here, we are making this even more resistant to Hesh damage um, than, let's say, here. Naturally, you do have to have a weak layer of wood in there, which makes the armor a little bit thicker for the amount of health, but still, it can be a pretty good idea if you're going to be fighting Hesh. Now, you can also put, and you should also put, heavy armor on the outside. Uh, especially if you're going to have really thick armor. As you've seen in the chart, heavy armor is pretty good, it is competitive. And if you thought putting metal on the outside was better, well, think again. You can do the math yourself, but I calculated this example precisely. And if you have the heavy armor on the outside and the metal as a backing material, because of how much health the heavy armor has, you end up with 99,000 effective health. If you do the opposite, you end up with 93,200 effective health. So pay attention to your composition. Don't overthink the actual layout, though. It doesn't have to be complicated, just one air gap, maybe some slopes. You can consider wedges, but given the changes made to sabots and such, not necessarily worth it. And it uses a lot of space to uh, do what it does. Um, so, yeah, don't overthink armor. Give it the appropriate amount of thought. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, a comment if you did, or even if you didn't, to help me improve. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and bye-bye.